Yeah, so I first came involved in the cadets uh, at Hounslow. Um, I've done 10 years operational service, uh, very interesting. Um, police order came out uh, about uh, people interested in joining the cadet corps, uh, training young men for uh, future recruitment into the uh, adult force. In the army, I'd, um, my career had been training uh, as training officer and uh, I put in for an application for the cadet corps and uh, had an interview with uh, the very famous uh, Colonel Croft, a lovely man and uh, I didn't really know how the interview went one of those times when you you don't quite know anyway I got the call uh, started at uh, Hendon uh, in those days we were with the uh, in a hut accommodation with the um, senior cadets along Aerodome Road uh, and uh, I started with uh, Ray Slocum any of you remember Ray Slocum and it was a uh, in the deep end, uh, the housemaster at the time was uh, an Inspector Jeffries, very keen uh, athletic man, and he was off to one of these adventure training courses, and uh, I was left with um, uh, another APS uh, looking after main house. Uh, really thrown in at the deep end. Um, Mr. Jeffries uh, had only sort of introduced me, uh, well, for about uh, a week. And as I say, we were left, I uh, can't remember his name at the moment, he was a flyweight boxer. Uh, lovely chap. Anyway, he and I took over main house. Uh, as I say, in the army, I was lucky enough to do all the training programs. And that was in, in the deep end. I um, run main house from the house nights and from the sporting side. Uh, of course, I still had the academics during the day, but um, it was a, a busy time and certainly uh, my uh, knowledge I gained from the army came in very, very useful. And also the uh, my backing of the police work because we've got to remember we weren't training policemen. Uh, we've just given them the insight into be becoming policemen at a much later date. We had to be quite careful about that. Uh, and uh, I had, um, well, 21 marvellous years. Uh, a wonderful career, both uh, operational in the police and in the cadet corps. I couldn't really have wished for a better life, meeting so many people. Um, we had a very close relationship on the staff side as well as the cadet side. Colonel Croft uh, made sure that the families were involved in the cadet corps, and especially both my daughters, when we used to have the 10 and 20 mile walk, they used to come and tick off the cadets, and they were much as involved in the cadet corps and my dear wife uh, on Friday nights we used to have staff nights so it was a, a lovely life all the way round and something uh, I thank God for. So can you remember any special occasions in the Cadet Corps? Well special occasions yes when we had the um, uh, Duchess of Kent um, she came to uh, one of the Cadet Corps uh, passing out parades uh, and uh, my wife and I had the uh, honour of having lunch with her and got some very nice uh, photographs as a memory and then another time when the Queen came uh, that was a, a, a big event because we had a in the staff where we used to have the staff uh, meetings and that uh, a special setup was with um, security even at that time uh, security was very, very strict, and uh, that was a, a memorable occasion. Um, 
And we had one or two famous people, um, Admiral uh, Lord Mountbatten. Uh, that was a very, very impressive uh, uh, meeting, uh, passing out parade, because he was so in with the cadets uh, after the parade, and um, they really took to him. And so it was very rewarding. Uh, many, many other people who came um, for passing out praise. It's hard to remember all of them at this time, but uh, it was a it was an end of term. In a way, end of term was a busy time. Uh, getting everybody ready for the passing out parade. And then after the parade, the parents used to come and talk about their particular um, cadet. And then it was sad when everybody went and you had a break before you started again. But you're always busy. You're always uh, getting ready for uh, camp, and um, which I used to take a lot of, uh, do a lot of work in. I used to enjoy the camps at Lippitz Hill and also um, uh, getting ready for all the sporting events. Uh, one of my things was uh, uh, race walking and uh, Ryan, uh, give us an R, give us an O, give us a W, give us an A, give us an N and what do you got? Ryan. And on that note, uh, I think that's about <laughs> all I can say. Just, just before you just before you finish, can you remember any sort of memorable things with the cadets? Anything that the cadets, any memorable, memorable achievements of the cadets, or uh, any particular cadet who uh, did anything unusual? Um, well, no, I can't by name. Um, I can. I like to think that uh, there was a lot of cadets that, especially uh, Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, uh, Sarah Coppy uh, was one of the um, Duke of Edinburgh Award Gold. Uh, she did a, a great deal of work um, in uh, looking after young disabled people. And we did have, uh, from the um, Duke, of Edinburgh, Duke of Edinburgh Award, we did have uh, quite a lot of uh, cadets do a lot of good work with uh, disabled people. Um, as regards our, I think all cadets were outstanding. I like to think that. They all did, they all had their personalities. And in some way or another, they contributed very, very much to the cadet corps. And I say again, it's something I thank the Lord for. And you also contributed a great deal to their lives because I know that uh, many of them have actually put comments on a website um, giving little stories about uh, about the things that you did when <laughs> you were in the cadets. Uh, but I, it's lovely to share these few moments with you, Ray, uh, George. And uh, I'm going to pass that on now to other cadets so that they can have a look at it. Thanks very much indeed for this interview, and I'm sure that they'll love, see it, love to see it. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.